What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course you know it's your boy Beehive Radio Shouty and stepping in the building, I got an artist that's tearing up the streets as we speak right now. L.A., what's good with it, my dog? speak. What's good, B? Hey, man, this R3, all of this music that you've been dropping has been going crazy. Thank Those you, man. visuals are off the damn chain Thank as you, well. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Break down this project to me, and was this something that, you know, break down the whole creative process behind yeah. that one? Nah, so we, like we were saying off air, like the COVID whole situation happened. Exactly. We was uh, still just getting it in, still grinding, still putting music together. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that was a great opportunity for me to just kind of focus on what the music was going to be and what the next thing was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I had finished my contract up with Atlantic. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I had a, had a project together, which was Aura 3. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had one one version of it yeah. together. And then uh, linked up with Sean Barron and Motown, and then we kind of came at, get, came to the came together and put all the records on the table, and then said like, let's keep this one, let's keep that one, and then we added some new stuff, and then you know, that's what we got today. Talk to so, me about going over there to Motown, though, man. What was that like getting on that legendary label? Yeah, man, it was it was cool because they they came to me with the um, proposition of like rebuilding and trying mm-hmm. to figure out like the new steps of where they're headed and. Uh, really saw potential in, in me as an artist and, and getting me to that next level. And I've always felt like, you know, I just, you know, was dealt kind of like a bad hand, like at the last situation. So um, coming into this new situation, it took a lot of persuasion, but um, Sean Barron and Ethiopia over there really um, got me in and, and made me feel comfortable. Yeah. So Break that down to me, though, L.A., man. What is it like for an artist being on these labels and being part of these? I mean, being on the corporate side of music versus the yeah. independent side. So sure. what was it like? Because I heard you kind of slick say, I was wanted to go independent, but I yeah. went ahead and went nah, back in there. So, I mean, I was so I was so close to just staying independent because I was, man, I, mean, I put a couple of records out by myself. And I was yeah. like, the, the money I'm seeing off of this, I don't really need a label, to be honest. Because <laughs> yeah. I got a fan base. You know exactly. what I'm saying? My fan base is still here listening. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I always tell people, well, I'm telling people now, like if you don't have nobody in them buildings, bro, mm. that's going to advocate for you and champion you and make sure like they really see your best interest. This, it's really no reason to sign to these labels. You can do everything digitally these days, online, everything can, you know, you can, I, I started online, you know, SoundCloud right. was like my big, you know, break. So, um, yeah, I feel like these days anything can, anything can work. <laughs> anything yeah. can, anything can happen, especially in music. Um, but in terms of labels, if you don't have somebody in that building that's going to put their neck out for you, then I wouldn't even sign. It's just how it goes these days. I was just talking to Sean earlier, and he was breaking down how that SoundCloud had y'all traveling the world already. Oh, man. yeah, definitely. What was that like coming in the game and then just jamming on SoundCloud and then next thing you know, you got to do shows all over right. the place? Nah, it was weird because SoundCloud was such a global thing. It, yeah. it, it was such a worldwide phenomenon almost because it was taking you all over around the globe. And I have peers and friends that were going to Germany, Berlin, and Paris, and all because they put a few records out on SoundCloud and it just took off. Mm-hmm. And I was one of those guys too. I mean, it took me to London, it took me to Paris, it took me to Tokyo, all these different places that I was just kind of like, you know, uh, just a guy that just from Macon, Georgia, you know okay, what I'm saying? Now, so, <laughs> hey, hey, tell me about what it was like when you touched down in Tokyo and all of these places, man, I, off of SoundCloud, I can't bro. even explain it. I can't explain it, it was incredible. Tokyo is one of the most amazing places in the world. If you ever get a chance to, to visit, yeah, I'd strongly recommend it. It's one of those places you just see and you're in awe of because we as Americans, we see everything in English around us, and we know it's that. We know what that is. We know what this is. Da, yeah. da, da, da. You get there, everything is in Japanese, and everything is, you know, you look around and you don't know what anything is, <laughs> but everything is in bright lights, neon, colorful, yeah. and it's just beautiful. And it's just like you... It's so weird. You, you take yourself out of it when you can't see that's a West End or that's yeah. a Marriott or, you know what I mean? that It's like it, it removes this sense, sensation of, like, knowing things. Yeah. And you just kind of fall in place of where you're at in the moment. And I don't know. It's one of those places that you just really, really got to visit. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just I, – it's one of the – Best places in the world to me. (laughs) When you go there with your music, though, man, what is it like when you touch down overseas with the music and the reaction from the people? Right. No, that's a different thing. It's just, and and before I even did the show, I remember walking in, walking up to the the venue door and getting stopped by, Mm -hmm. you know, a Japanese kid. And he's like, can I take a picture real quick, blah, blah, blah. 
And, uh, you know, they don't really speak that, that well English, yeah. but, you know, I get the gist of what he wants. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's it's one of those things you just – I don't think you ever really get used to. Mm-hmm. I'm in a different country. I'm on the other side of the globe. <laughs> and there's a kid asking me for a picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you do the show, and they can party, too. They can party all night. So, yeah, I mean, and that's that's different places overseas anyway. I feel like I feel like a lot of you know places overseas really really loves music, mm-hmm. and it doesn't really matter if you're the biggest star in the world. If they love the music, then they're a fan. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Whereas here in America, I feel like we look at like status. Oh, and it's all about things that, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, that's one of the differences I've noticed overseas. Is I mean, I've had so many like K-pop um, mm. stars who's huge over there in Korea. Yeah. Um, want to work with me just because they love the music. And it's like, you got a million and three, five million fans, and I don't, I'm not there yet. Yeah. But you still want to work with you me because they mind. just like, yeah, they like the music and they love it. So, yeah, bro. It's, 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 it's been a journey and it's been really, really fun. Yeah. Speaking of fun, I mean, those are also fun facts, my friend. <laughs> Good segue. Come on, man. <laughs> Working with that boy Rick Ross on the song. How did you get yeah. that feature and what was that like? Yeah, so um, I've, I've worked with Ross in the past a few times, actually. He was actually supposed to be on the last project. Um, yeah. He did the verse and everything, but we didn't put it out. Uh. Um, it was Atlantic. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> going on to the next situation, um, <laughs> next conversation. Um, yeah, so my manager is big, big, um, big friends with uh, Gucci Pucci, who you uh, was managing Ross like a while ago. Yeah, and um, you know we just got we clicked up back in the day. I, I've always known him. I've always been one of those things. It's always been one of those things where I'll go over to his house and just be that kid just in the corner, yeah. just listening to conversations and just soaking up game. Um, and yeah, it was it, it was one of those things. Like especially when I heard the beat, I was like, he'll sound crazy on this. So it was like. You reach out to him, and then, you know, it just happened. <laughs> Talk to me about being able to be a fly on the wall and soaking up that kind of game, Definitely. though, man. What you picking up in there? It's just bag talk. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. I mean, <laughs> them boys was talking some bag talk. So it's, it, it's it's one of those things, like, I, just, I always consider it a blessing just to be in the room because, you know, these guys are millionaires, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm just a kid back then, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, so I always used to just – Soak up game and just listen to what they had to say and any type of advice they gave, I took it, and yeah, it's it's worked out so far. So another bang of my city, yeah, you a Masego man. Yeah. I mean, talk to me about that bang right there. <laughs> so my city is great because you know I I reached out to so I've known Masego for years. Yeah, um, really good friend of mine, and I, it was really nothing, just to call away, just to be like, yo, what's going on? What you got going on? Can I get some? Some ideas on some stuff. I yeah. sent him over some records. He liked some stuff. Then he sent me over some records, and one of those records turned out to be My City. And it was just like, I was like, you're going to keep this? Like, if you're not going to keep this, then I'll take it. He was like, bro, no, like, just take it. Like, I think you sound amazing on it. So I yeah. did some verses, and then I sent it back to him, and he was like, bro, this is it. So um, it's been doing really well. It's been doing amazing, and I'm super happy to have it do be successful, you know, in, in, in my terms of success, at least. It's doing really well. So. Yeah, right, a million views and everything. <laughs> else, the thing yeah, crazy. Nah, it's doing great. So, I mean, like, I, you know, sometimes I'd be a little too humble, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's doing great. So, yeah. What was it like shooting a video for that thing? Because that video was fire, too. It was fun, man. We um, shot in L.A. during the pandemic. What? <laughs> so, uh, we it was like one location or two locations. So we shot them in the desert as well. My homie Wu over here, he, up, my, my creative director. We we put all the, these videos together. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, we shot it in the uh, hills, in like Beverly Hills. And, yeah. man, it was terrifying because, you know, there's no guardrails up there. It's like you just going up there with a car. If you hit the gas a little too hard, it's over with. It's the last yeah, time. Nah, it's the last time you're going to drive. So... <laughs> So, yeah, man, it was terrifying from that sense. But once you got up there and you saw the view and just my L.A., um, just the scope of how big it is and just, you know, the, the weather, it was, it was great. It was a great time. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I mean, another joint that I enjoyed was that Separated, though, man. That yeah. Separated was crazy. Thank you, man. Yeah. Now, that was in Queens. We shot that in uh, New York. Yeah. It was snowing. It was cold. as Oh, it was it was. It was really cold. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it, it turned out really good. Also, uh, one location thing where it was just, you know, trying to make something out of nothing in the pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, just trying to maneuver through it. 
um, wearing five masks on a plane and <laughs> <laughs> trying to get, trying to still grind and get it together. So yeah, but that record was great. I mean, like it's it's been a overall great time with with Aura Three. I'm happy, and, and also we're going on tour at the end of this this year too for it. Speaking of that tour life, man, I mean that Trouble in Paradise tour. Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? Because, I mean, you said that that tour was slick therapeutic and saved your life, man. What the <laughs> it hell? It was. I mean, honestly, I thought I was going to end everything after that. Not not my life. <laughs> but end, like, my career, my music career yeah. after Trouble in Paradise. I thought, you know, before Trouble in Paradise tour, I was slick on a, you know, I was on the Atlantic label, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what the next step was there. I felt like I like I mentioned earlier, it wasn't really dealt the right hand. Mm. And I just kind of like, I'm kind of over this you know, music thing, and it wasn't until Trouble in Paradise tour where you know that was my first headline tour, mm. and then I saw the people come out, the, the reactions I was getting from people, and just the interactions I was getting mm-hmm. with people, and it changed my perspective. I thought like I was done with it at first, and then I got on that tour, and just hearing the stories and and connecting with the people was one of those things that was like, okay, I can't really stop this. I really have an impact on some of these people. Um, so yeah You said the fans Saved your life though man Definitely I think so You know what I mean Not, In more ways than one Because I feel like You know without I don't know It's, it's like Us as people Just human beings We want um, Validation We want um, Accolades We mm-hmm. want these things Reassurance That's right um, And You know For me And what I do I've dedicated my whole life to this You know yeah. what I mean And To have people Not like it I'm not sure how I could You know react to that <laughs> um, and, a, uh, and that's just one side Of the spectrum The other side is that You know I got my personal life I'm dealing with And I had yeah. some stuff That I was dealing with there too So um, Music has always been Therapy for me And then having The added bonus Of like fans That just really have my back And mm-hmm. you know Want to support me And want to big me up It's, it's Yeah I, I owe my fans a lot And you know This year and next year Is all about Piling on to those You know what was it like coming off of that tour, being rejuvenated, and then Kobe it pops out of nowhere the next year? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think Kobe was, like, the best thing, like we were talking yeah, about earlier. Like, exactly. I think it was, like, really good for me and just slowed up everything. You yeah. know what I mean? So where I felt like everybody was, you know, moving so fast, and I'm trying to catch up. I'm like, man, these yeah. guys are so um, – I felt like it was a good opportunity for me to get my business together, not only that, but the music also – and just get myself, my personal life in a good spot. And yeah, man, like I really, you know, COVID was such a terrible thing globally, but yeah. for me personally, uh, I use it as a as a good, you know, moment to just reset, you know. What was it that let you know during that time that it was the time to strike though? Because a lot of people just sat back and locked the door and said, I ain't coming back out until this thing go <laughs> over with. Over with. Um, I, I think, like I said, I think it was just one of those things where it's like, are they gonna move? Is is he's not moving? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I'll move. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I mean, that was kind of the whole gist of where I was at at the at the moment. I was like, okay, well, if everyone's gonna be kind of like not putting out music or just kind of slowing up, mm-hmm. then I will use this opportunity to go shoot videos, to go get my business in order, and go get my personal life in order. And yeah, talk to me about getting your business in order, though, man. What was yeah. that like? Because some so often we find ourselves getting so engrossed in the creative side of things right. that we forget about the business. Yeah, I think that's you know, honestly, like you never really can dictate, you know where things are going to end up, you know, and that was my situation, my last label, yeah. where I, you know, you go into something hoping that is one thing and you come out of it, you know, realizing that it was something totally different. And as a kid, as an artist, as a young artist back in the day or a teenager, you're kind of looking at just record labels as like this grand, this Santa is Claus. like the achievement. Yeah. yeah. Like this is the one achievement that you have to do. Um, and you know, I was at that time my first label. I was like, I'll take anything. I don't care what it is. It's, it's a label, a, rec, a a record label, company like yeah. a big company. Yeah, I do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> um, and you know, you slowly mature, you slowly realize and, and learn about the business. And um, that was my situation before. And now I'm coming into Motown, um, kind of asking for different things and mm. knowing what I want to do. And they've been very, very helpful and just 
helping us push my vision, you know, yeah. and where I didn't really have one coming into the last situation. Mm. So I know myself as an artist and I know myself as a person, as just a human being at this point, a little bit better. And it's been a, a good thing so far uh, with them. So, yeah. Another jam I got to ask you about is that Wicked with OT Genesis, man. <laughs> How did that Wicked. banger come about? Oh, man. That was uh, Trouble in Paradise. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was one of those things where we were trying to figure out who would sound good on it. I think Kodak was our first our, our first idea. I was like, man, I think Kodak would sound crazy on this. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think my A&R at Atlantic was – saying that, you know, he thinks OT would be sounding great on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And I think I just popped up to the studio one day and, and he put he pressed play on it and he was on it. He was at the end of it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, OT, yeah, he, and he, he showed love too. So yeah, I, I mess with OT though. But those who want to get into the music industry, LA, and they don't know what to expect, man. Can you break down the reality versus the fiction or the fantasy yeah, of it all? definitely. I mean, um, like I was saying earlier, it's, it's important to have somebody advocating for you. I think people get, you know, lost in the idea of, like, this, you know, the, the glitz and the glamour of it, but not realizing that there's a bunch of stuff behind the scenes that yeah. every artist is going through, and it's nine times out of ten, 80% BS, 20% success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like um, a lot of times we don't see that behind the scenes stuff. Yep. All we see is like the the last, the final mm -hmm. of it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's important to kind of like do your research and make sure that like you in tune with what's going on um, behind that and not just like sold on, you know, the end product. <laughs> exactly. Now I'm with you. Moving forward, though, L.A., yep. what you got coming up? What do folks need to be looking out for in this thing? Man, um, so right now we're working on a lot of different content. We got, like, a little mini concert that we shot uh, for Aura 3. And just Aura in general, we, we did some some stuff from the other Auras in that concert. And then um, we got a new vlog, vlog series that mm -hmm. we're working on, um, merch coming for Aura 3, and then a uh, tour. And then I'm working on the next album as well, so... Talk to me about that whole aura thing, man. What was it that made you mm -hmm. hit them with the aura? And what was it that you wanted your audience to understand about your aura? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just one of those things where I just saw aura as, you know, a, just a launching pad, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of like lead into other things. Because everybody, you know, generally has an aura, you know, or surrounding them. And, and it was, for me, it was about each situation and each relationship that I was in and, and the auras that I saw in each of those people. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like, you know, the, ne the negatives and the positives. <laughs> so I felt like it was a great, like, just foundation to talk about whatever. You know exactly. what I mean? It's like there's so many, there's so blue, red, purple, all these different things that, like, I did research on and, like, I felt like could work in concepts and just mm -hmm. different things. So, yeah, I mean, that was just the whole thing and, you know, that's where it started so yeah <laughs> <laughs> lastly this new project though what do we need to be expecting from that though the next album uh -huh. um man we already got some crazy stuff um i got a record with ty on there that Ooh. is crazy which i'll get that to you soon when it's, when it's when it's done yeah um but yeah that that's the that's the latest one we was working on but yeah, I think that the, the, the album is gonna be amazing. This is just an EP, so this is just an appetizer, and it just had like it has Ross on it and Masego mm -hmm. and then my boy Xavier yep. who's over at RCA who's doing yep. great things as well. So yeah, I mean, you know, that, like if this is an appetizer, it, 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 you could expect things to just only level up from here. So that's what I would say. <laughs> Big old facts. Mm -hmm. How can these folks contact you? And is there anything you want to get off your chest, bro? <laughs> nah, I mean, be shoot. It's been like six years since <laughs> exactly. we did this, so we got go. to keep this consistent. Oh, I'm uh, here for it, man. Whenever, just let yeah, me know. I mean, E L H A E. That's how you can find me. Um, Every life has an ending. Is mm -hmm. the, the acronym? Mm -hmm. um, L A. That's how you say it. Uh, and that's it, man. You know, just <laughs> support or three is out right now. Um, yeah, that's it. Already, L.A. My guy. Appreciate you coming yeah, through always, this thing, man, boy. Yeah, always, man, always. Wish you nothing but the best and yes, much success. Sir. Beehive Radio, shout it. We go. Allah. <laughs>